Did you know that being too kind could actually be hurting you? It sounds crazy, right? We've all been taught that kindness is one of the most powerful virtues, and it is. But here's the thing, overextending your kindness, expecting something in return, or not setting boundaries can leave you feeling drained, unappreciated, and even resentful. If you want to truly harness the power of kindness in your life, you need to understand the stoic approach to self-preservation. The best part? By learning how to balance kindness with self-respect and boundaries, you'll not only preserve your own well-being, but you'll also become even more effective in helping others. Sounds like a win-win, right? But first, you need to avoid the mistake of giving without limits because doing so might just lead you down a path of burnout and frustration. Stick around as we dive into the stoic way of mastering kindness and the art of giving without losing yourself. Number one, the dangers of overextending kindness. A stoic perspective, happiness is the root of what drives us to be kind. We are all familiar with those warm feelings that arise when we help someone out, give advice or extend a hand. It's as if we're part of a shared human connection, like being part of something larger than ourselves. In our day-to-day -day lives, kindness isn't just a virtue, it's a form of expression. It's what we think can make us feel fulfilled and even admired. But, as we dive deeper into the philosophy of Stoicism, we begin to realize that kindness, while a powerful force, can also be a double-edged sword. At the heart of Stoicism is the idea of virtue, acting in a way that benefits not just ourselves, but also those around us. Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus, and other Stoic philosophers emphasized the importance of self-control, temperance, and rationality in our actions. This doesn't mean we should abandon kindness altogether, but it does suggest that kindness, when taken to the extreme, can have unintended consequences. The Stoics believed that overextending ourselves to others at the expense of our own well-being is a form of vice. Imagine this, you've been the person who always says yes, the one who puts everyone else's needs before your own, whether it's staying late at work to help a colleague, offering advice to a friend in crisis, or even just taking on extra responsibilities that you don't need to, you've built a reputation for being the reliable, go-to person. It feels good, right? You're seen as someone who is generous, selfless, and compassionate. But slowly, over time, the stress builds. You start to feel exhausted. There's no time left for your own hobbies or mental peace. You've given everything to everyone else, but where does that leave you? That feeling of being overwhelmed, stretched thin, and constantly in demand is a result of overextending kindness. Stoicism teaches us that kindness should come from a place of inner peace and rational thinking, not from an obligation to please others. When kindness is given freely without expecting anything in return, it enriches both the giver and the receiver. But when it becomes a demand, a habit driven by external validation, it shifts from virtuous to unhealthy. Thinking back to moments in your life when you've given too much, perhaps you've recalled times when you've sacrificed your own happiness to make someone else comfortable. Have you ever stayed up all night helping a friend with their problems, only to find that they took advantage of your kindness, leaving you drained? Or maybe you've offered so much help that it felt like you lost your sense of self, wondering if you were really doing it for them, or because you thought it was expected of you. In those moments you can't help but feel a little resentful, even though you tried to do the right thing. The Stoics would say this is a danger, that kindness without boundaries can lead to emotional depletion. This isn't just an abstract idea, it's a real danger many of us face every day. In modern life, we live in a world that celebrates the selfless hero who never says no. Social media often highlights stories of extreme acts of kindness, fueling the pressure to keep giving. 
While it's true that kindness can create bonds and bring joy, the danger comes when that kindness becomes your only source of validation. Stoicism suggests that for true balance, we need to assess our limits and establish boundaries. By doing so, we ensure our kindness is rooted in a healthy, sustainable place. When we act out of duty rather than love, we risk creating relationships that are imbalanced and ultimately unsatisfying. So, how do we strike the balance? The Stoics teach that we should learn to give, but also know when to stop. When we begin to feel our own energy slipping away or sense that our kindness is being exploited, we must listen to those inner warning signals. Number two, the art of setting boundaries, protecting your well-being. At first glance, setting boundaries can feel like something negative, like shutting people out or being selfish. We've all been in situations where someone's request seemed harmless, but over time, we realized that saying yes too often was draining us emotionally and mentally. Think about a time when you were at your limit, when someone asked for your help once again, but you didn't have the energy to give. Perhaps you hesitated or found yourself saying yes out of fear of disappointing them, but inside, you knew you were reaching a breaking point. Now imagine if you had the courage to say no from the beginning. The Stoic philosophers believed that in order to live a virtuous and tranquil life, we must have self-control and the ability to set clear boundaries. They didn't see boundaries as selfish or limiting, they saw them as an essential part of maintaining inner peace. Epictetus often spoke about the importance of distinguishing between what is in our control and what isn't. Our time, energy and emotions are within our control and it is our responsibility to protect them from being depleted by others' demands. You might be thinking, but isn't it selfish to say no? Actually, Stoicism teaches us the opposite. By setting boundaries, we are protecting our energy so that we can give more freely and meaningfully when we do choose to help. Think about it this way. If you are constantly running on empty, how can you truly serve others or even yourself. If you're always giving and never taking time for yourself, you'll eventually burn out and your kindness will lose its power. Let's pause for a moment and reflect. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you agreed to something, but you deep down wished you hadn't? Maybe it was a social obligation, a work assignment, or even just agreeing to go out when you were exhausted. You might have felt the weight of your decision as soon as you said yes, but you didn't feel like you could back out. This is where boundaries come into play. Setting boundaries is about reclaiming your time and your space. It's not about shutting people down. It's about being clear with yourself and others about what you're able and willing to give. Remember times when you were younger, perhaps when you didn't understand the value of saying no. Maybe you said yes because you were afraid of conflict or because you feared that people wouldn't like you if you didn't comply. Over time, you probably realized that your inability to say no led to stress and exhaustion. The people who respected your boundaries often appreciated you more because you weren't constantly over-promising and under-delivering. Those who didn't respect your limits, on the other hand, likely took you for granted and that caused resentment. Setting boundaries is not about being harsh, it's about protecting yourself and your peace. As you get older, you start to realize that life becomes easier when you are firm about what you can give. The more you practice setting boundaries, the better you get at recognizing when you are being stretched too thin. And while saying no might feel uncomfortable at first, it becomes easier with time you start to realize that people who truly value you will understand and respect your need for space. Those who don't are not worth your time or emotional energy. But what happens when you set a boundary and people don't respect it? This is where the Stoics give us valuable insight. They teach us that we can't control others, only our reactions. So when someone oversteps a boundary, 
It's not about them, it's about how we choose to respond. Do we let ourselves feel disrespected, or do we remain calm, collected and centered, knowing that we are doing what is right for our well-being? The Stoics remind us that we cannot control what others do, but we can control how we handle it. Number 3. The Pitfall of Expecting Reciprocity Stoicism and Detached Generosity When you give, do you expect something in return? It's a question worth pondering, especially in today's society, where relationships are often transactional. We've all been there, helping a friend or colleague, only to hope that they will return the favor when we need it. It's natural to want reciprocity, but what happens when we don't get it? We might feel resentment or disappointment. Stoicism offers a powerful antidote to this cycle of expectation. The Stoics believed in the concept of detached generosity. This means giving without the expectation of receiving anything back. This isn't to say we shouldn't appreciate kindness when it comes our way, but Stoicism teaches that our happiness should never depend on external circumstances, like whether someone returns a favor. If you give expecting something in return, you are tying your sense of well-being to the actions of others. And this, the Stoics say, is a dangerous game to play. Take a moment to reflect. Think of a time when you gave someone something, whether it was time, money, or support, and you expected them to repay you in some way. How did you feel when they didn't? Maybe you felt frustrated or angry. In the back of your mind, you might have thought, I gave them so much, and they didn't even acknowledge it. But here's the thing by expecting reciprocity, you are setting yourself up for disappointment. The Stoics would say that the only thing we should expect is to act virtuously, not to get something in return. When we give freely, without attachment to the outcome, we are living in alignment with nature. This detached generosity creates a sense of peace, because we are not relying on others to fulfill us. Instead, we are content in knowing that we have done what is right, regardless of the response. But here's the curious part. What if we started looking at giving in a new way? Instead of focusing on what we might get in return, what if we viewed generosity as an opportunity to practice virtue, regardless of the outcome? Could this shift in mindset lead to a deeper sense of fulfillment? It's a question worth exploring, and the Stoics would encourage us to reflect on this every time we give, ensuring that our acts of kindness are not weighed down by the need for recognition or reward. Number 4. The Power of Saying No, Embracing Stoic Self-Respect In a world that constantly demands more from us, where every interaction and decision seems to come with an implicit expectation to agree, participate or give, the power of saying no often goes unrecognized. But what if we told you that saying no isn't a sign of weakness, but rather a vital practice for self-respect and emotional sovereignty? This is where Stoicism offers us profound insights, an ancient philosophy that is as relevant today as it was in ancient Greece and Rome. The Stoics, with their emphasis on virtue, inner strength and personal responsibility, understood the deep value of self-respect and the importance of protecting one's energy and time. Saying no, in many ways, is an art. It requires clarity, confidence, and the strength to prioritize your own well-being over external pressures. For those who struggle with boundaries, whether in personal relationships, work, or social settings, this is a practice that, once honed, can dramatically improve the quality of your life. In this exploration of the Stoic perspective on saying no, we'll dive into how this simple yet powerful action can lead to greater personal freedom, inner peace, and the cultivation of a life aligned with your true values. The modern struggle, saying yes to everything. We live in a world of constant demands, whether it's from friends, family, colleagues, or even social media, the pressure to say yes 
to be accommodating, to appear helpful, or to be seen as good, often feels overwhelming. We are constantly asked for favors, time, energy, and attention. In a world that values productivity, multitasking, and accessibility, the art of saying no can seem counterproductive. But the more we say yes, the more we risk losing sight of what truly matters to us, our goals, our peace of mind, and our personal integrity. How many times have you found yourself agreeing to something you didn't truly want to do, just to avoid conflict or to please others? It's easy to slip into this pattern, especially when we want to avoid the discomfort of disappointing someone or feeling left out. We don't want to let people down, and so we overextend ourselves. This is where the Stoic perspective becomes crucial. Stoicism, saying no for inner freedom, the Stoics, particularly Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus and Seneca, were masters of self-control and personal boundaries. One of the key tenets of Stoicism is the understanding that while we cannot control external circumstances, we can always control how we respond to them. This control begins with the realization that we are the gatekeepers of our own time, energy and emotional resources. Stoicism teaches us to focus on what is within our control and to let go of what is not. When we constantly say yes to others at the expense of our own well-being, we are giving up control over our lives. Saying no, then, becomes an act of reclaiming that control. If you've made it this far, drop a hundred in the comments to show you're part of the 0.01% who actually finish what they start. That shows you're someone who's ready to take action and put this wisdom into practice. It's no small feat to change your mindset and approach, and you're on the right path. If you're truly serious about transforming your life, make sure to hit that subscribe button and join our community. We're here to help you level up, and trust me, you won't want to miss the next steps in your journey. Keep pushing forward, because greatness starts with taking control of your own destiny.